Today we're going to be um, hearing with the, t the sermon's title being "Love uh, Christians' Love for the Country." Let us pray one more time. Loving God, Lord, we have left our motherland, Korea, and it's been a while. And because we've been living in a foreign country, you know, we've lost the interest about our motherland. And even in this new country, we live this day, you know, struggling, and we even forget the interest of with of our life within this country. Lord, only you know our needs. Lord, wherever we are, help us to live faithfully for your kingdom, um, and especially to have the heart of loving our countries. Lord, as you give us this word today, help us to live according to your will. Um, according to the truth that you give us through this message today. And all these things in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So, you know, when I first came to this church, you know, we I we gave a sermon for the March 1st, uh, which is the Independence uh, Day, move, Independence Movement in Korea. We were, rep uh, we were celebrating that. So when I first came to this church, uh, we gave a celebratory sort of service during that time. We've had multiple, some famous speakers and people who were sort of either involved or part of the independence movement of Korea. And as I was reflecting um, this, you know, this past Friday was March 1st, which is the 100th year anniversary of the actual independence movement that they had in Korea. Uh, this is um, independence from Japan, um, uh, North Korea. Uh, and so, remembering this independence movement, we're going to be speaking today about loving the country as a Christian. You know, there is a Korean poet who gave this uh, poem. This is the city I love so much. It is my country. There may be many big countries that shine upon the world, but there's only one country that I live in. And whatever happens um, in the history, it becomes my blood and pulse that provides life. Wherever I go, I look for the glory of my country, whether it is divided between north and south or lost in its ideology. I carry the burden of this country like a servant and head toward the divinity. And finally, when the flower will blossom after a long worrying and waiting, and this too is like the dream of a country that I live, that I love. Now, a poet, you know, wrote this uh, poem, who is so, who has a sincere patriotism uh, towards the, our country, South Korea, specifically. So, as I was just reflecting on this independence movement time, you know, I kind of thought, that, thought about, you know, giving a sermon, speaking a sermon about truly having that patriotism heart uh, as a Christian life. You know, many times we dream about or we think about God's kingdom in our life, but how much of that do we truly live in our reality, in our life? You know, As a Christian, you know, despite the fact that we've left uh, our motherland country, Korea, and live in this country, USA, you know, whatever the situation is, you know, we still have a obligation as a Christian to live a loving, um, to continue to have the love for the country that we came from and that we live in. You know, Israelites, when they got freed from the Egypt, you know, as they were um, going through the desert for the 40 years, you know, oftentimes they kept on complaining and saying that, you know, this is so hard, you know, let me rather go back to Egypt and where we were so much more comfortable, despite the fact that they were living in slavery. And Moses, at that time, you know, gave a prayer saying, you know, even if it's 
um, even if you take away my life, even if my name is not represented, would you deliver these uh, people, Israelite people, uh, from these uh, difficulties? You know, he had such a pa patriotic heart towards the Israelite people. He has such a sincere loving heart for the people of God. So let me ask you, as you are a believer, it's not just about you know, quote unquote, loving God and dreaming of God's kingdom. Of course, that's the mo most important thing. But it's not just that and pure end of it all and you don't care about other people. No, you still have to love and have the heart for the country that you came from and the country that you're living in. You know, if you live in a country let's say it goes into war or economy fails or something happens and if it was overtaken by another country who who does not give religion freedom you know we wouldn't even have freedom to able to worship god or practice uh, the things that we do you know so therefore you need to continue as a citizen of this country as a citizen of a uh, person who came from our motherland korea you need to continue to pray for those country you know, verse 2 in 1 uh, Timothy chapter 2 for kings of all those authority that we may have lived peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness that's 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2 for kings and all those in authority that we may live peacefully and quiet, li quiet lives in all godliness and holiness you know this basically is telling us that we need to be li light loving um, loving our country and that is equal to loving ourselves you know the third thing that God shows us is that God well God when we were born he gives us two gift the first gift is a parent gift of parent and the second thing is the gift of the country that we're born in. So therefore, for us to love our parents and love our country, it's a you know no-brainer. You know, as a Christian believer, we need to be respecting and loving our parents um, because that's the life that God has given to us through our parents. But also, you're born in a specific country, you become a citizen. And so, therefore, you are naturally have to love the country. You know, think about it. You know, we, as Korean uh, church community, you know, we immigrated from Korea to America. And we live in this country as an immigrant, working hard, doing business, you know, doing salon. You know, we live daily, you know, in a struggle, hard working every day. Yes, you're hard working, but oftentimes we forget everything else that happened from our mother country. You know, we've left there and we just kind of forget about it, don't know what's going on over there, and we don't care. Isn't that what we are? Right? We're so indulged in our daily lives, we forget about where we come from. And I want you guys who are intercessor prayer team especially you guys who are involved in the prayer team, you we should remember to not only pray for our lives to the here today, our church here today, but you should remember our country. You should remember our mother country and pray for Korea. This is actually a something that God through the scripture teaches us. It's a gift that God has given us, our parents and our country, our net our mother country. And it's a, it's a thing that where we come from. So we need to remember that and we need to pray for that. And we need to have our patriotism and we need to be Christian who has patriotism for the country that we came from. So through the scripture of today, through the Nehemiah, Maya, we want to hear about what it means to be a true patriotism. So the first thing that the scripture teaches us is how we need to love our country. It begins by having a great interest in the country that we come from. 
So this scripture, um, you know, the story background is, you know, the Israelites were exiled in Babylon, Babylon, and then after they have come back from the exile, they came back to Jerusalem and to Israel. You know, they, uh, Nehemiah was asking the people uh, in that place, um, you know, how has your life been? How has your life been since the exile? You know, how are things going in the hometown? You know, Nehemiah, who was a person who was also exiled, um, who was a cupbearer for King um, Artaxerxes in Persia, he still had heart for his own uh, hometown. So he was asking the people from his hometown about having still having that interest for his hometown. You know, oftentimes we focus on the worldly news, the celebrity news, right? About who broke up with who, you know, who got the Emmy Award, you know, etc., etc. You know, oftentimes we're so interested in that versus, you know, are we actually interested in the things, you know, economically or politically that's happening in our countries, you know, whether it's America or Korea. And when you do in, engage in those nuisances, are you just doing it for the sake of having a little interest? Or are you actually uh, concerned about these things? You know, there is a um, theologian, very famous theologian, Karl Barth. And he's a very famous theologian. And after, um, and he, after seven years of serving in church, he then went into theology even more in depth and he said this he said if you are a true mature christian you need to be carrying bible in one hand and you need to be carrying newspaper in the other hand you know he's saying in one hand you have to ha have the scripture and you also you have to know what's going on in today's world in order to live according to the scripture you know, you cannot just ignore what's going on in the reality of this world about the economy, political views, and all these things. You cannot just ignore it and only look at the scripture. You need to have an interest in everything that's going on in the world so that we can live biblically. Scripture, what tells us. This is truly an important thing we need to remember. You need to ask yourself, do I actually have interest in my country? Or do you just say, oh, I'm living well, my, I'm making good money, my business is good. You know, I could, you know, my kids are smart and they're growing well and they're healthy. I could care less for everything else. I know I'm a good part of church member. I volunteer at church. I volunteer here and there. You know, my life is good, so I don't have to worry about what's going on with my own country or my home country. You know, you need to ask yourself, you know, God brought you here to this country. You know, you have to ask yourself why God brought you here and what God has in store for you. And you need to have an interest in where you still came from and the place that you are in. You know, what's unfortunate is, especially our children in this generation, we our children don't learn about what what March 1st independence movement was all about from in Korea or many of them don't even know what June 25th is it's the war it's a day when war started uh, in Korea you know just because I live here we live here in this American country just because we live in a daily day struggle you know making our ends meet you know we just kind of ignore about our history about where we come from you know, despite what we're going through, despite the struggles that we have, we still need to educate our younger generation, our children, about the history of Korea, about the independence movement, about the Korean War, about the history that has taken. And that is our responsibility as a older generation to teach that. The second thing, the second thing that the scripture tells us about how to love this country is to have the tear of love for the motherland. That's what Nehemiah did. You know, he had tears of love for the country that he came from in Jerusalem. You know, if you have, if you could care less about what's going on in Korea, you know, this may be uncomfortable to hear, 
but you're not a mature Christian if you don't care about what's going on from your motherland. Yes, you could live a good, quote unquote, trying to live a, you know, good faithful life in here every day. But if you don't think about where you come from, you know, the North Korea, all the economical issues that's going on, you know, and not praying for that, you know, then you're not a mature Christian. You know, back in the day, 1997, when IMF, um, the Great Depression happened in Korea, you know, some people came up to me and said, oh, yeah, you know, good thing that this happened in Korea. They needed an economical, you know, reset and, you know, they need to go through the depression in order to realize, you know, the things, what has, what they've done wrong, blah, 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 blah. You know, how can you as a, if you're a Christian, mature Christian, how can you s indulge or be happy about the suffering in Korea just because your business is doing well here in America how can you care less about what's going on in Korea you know don't you have relatives there don't you have other people there even if your family wasn't there this is the country you came from how can you say that you know at one time as a pastor, I hear these things and sometimes I get very frustrated, but I need to control myself. But you know, when we hear these things and when people are blaming another country or economical issues or whatever, you know, despite the fact that it may not affect your personal life, you still need to have interest and you still need to pray for that. You know, there was a guy who was a 17-year-old and um, who was, you know, working for a country and was delivering messages from one country to the another place. It was just, he was just a deliverer, he was just a messenger and he got caught by the enemy and then he, you know, he could have just said, oh, I'm just a messenger, please let me go. He, his life could have been, he could have been saved. But he said, you know, I am a true patriot. I do this for the love of my country. You know, what other consequence may have, he, may have he had, you know. But that's the true mentality you need to have if you are a true patriot. A, punch, a person who truly loves the country. And I'll tell you personally, I personally don't like our current pr Korean president. But... But even if I personally don't like that person, you know, this is the person that was still elected by democratic um, vote in Korea. It's what the people of Korea had supported, you know, so I still need to respect it and to follow it, right? I can't just curse him off, right? You know, and I, I, I still take that and pray for him. I pray for the leader of the country and that's what we need to do. And this is another thing. In the past week, we had UMC meeting, the United Methodist Church meeting about the homosexuality. And a lot of people, you know, were debating between allowing homosexuality or going or continuing to go against the homosexuality. We just had that meeting last week. You know, back in the day when we go to the meetings, you know, oftentimes there were people were fighting, you know, between the two people. You know, back in the day, if a losing team, if if they voted and then they passed a some kind of a vote, then the person who lost, you know, supports that leader and and to support the thing. But this time, this time, so in the back in the you know in the old days, we're supposed to be you know people who lost their vote should be supporting the people who won. But then this time, you know, the people who vote who lost the vote, who was trying to do the pro-homosexuality type of a thing, you know, when they lost, you know, instead of supporting the people uh, who won by the voting um, majority, they started, you know, uh, protesting, they started causing riots, and these are pastors we're talking about. You know, and then, despite, and then they came up even, even, um, you know, another solution to, if you are, 
sort of against the vote that we just did, you can become an independent church and you can get out of the our um, the United Methodist Church group and we can allow you to freely do that. But despite that they did choose not to and continue to fight and continue to cause riot. And this, you know, is troubling. This is troubling. And this is relevant to us too. You know, we can care less about what happens within the United Methodist Church group. Um as a whole, you know, because I live a, you know, faithful life myself, I don't care what happens and what decisions they make. No, this is a important decision for all of us and it impacts in part our life. If you're a true Christian, mature Christian, you need to be caring and praying for these issues. You know, there was a, um, let me tell you a story about this um, African expedition group. You know, as they were going through the village of the uh, African country, you know, they got, you know, there's over 300 types of uh, different monkeys and there's a specific monkey, um, actually all of them collectively had this specific action where they cry out as a whole group of monkeys uh, will start cry out. There's three, they found out there's three reasons why they, they do that. The first reason is if they're, the leader of the monkey uh, dies of old age or whatever, then they all collectively cry together. The second reason they collectively cry is if if a newborn monkey baby dies, um, you know, then they all collectively to cry together. Another thing, another thing is if they third reason that they cry collectively is if they have a uh, if there's a serpent or a, an anaconda, you know, that catches a monkey and kills it to eat it. So then the monkeys as a group, they throw rock at that anaconda. But if they're not able to uh, un let go of the anaconda, if they're not able to free that monkey, they um, cry together collectively. You know, even monkeys, animals have heart for each other, for their own species. Should we not as human beings, as God's people, pray for each other and love each other? You know, if you, just because you hate your president, whether it's Trump, whether it's President Moon in Korea, just because you don't like them, you're, you're cursing them off. You know, is that what we need to be doing as a Christian? You know, of course, you can have your own opinion, differences, but it's not right to be cursing them off just because your thoughts are different from them, especially if the person became in place because of the majority vote. This morning, I heard about a family story that had attended our church for a long time. You know, they've moved. Uh, their son died or, or fell um, due to a heart attack. And he's in a comatose state right now. You know, they used to attend our church before. You know, only thing I could have said was, you know, let's pray for them. Right? You know, should I not at least have a loving heart for the people, at least for our church? You know, even if we can't, if our heart is not good enough to pray for other our country, you know, you know, shouldn't we at least have loving heart for our church members? But oftentimes we hate each other. You know, we have so much envy amongst each other, especially in this Korean community, Korean church. You know, is that something we need to be doing as a Christian, mature Christian person? You know, back in, in when Gandhi, you know, Gandhi had a rotten teeth, uh, carries, and there was a dentist who, American dentist, had offered to freely, uh, without a charge, um, treat Gandhi's teeth. And then Gandhi said to the dentist, you know, only after you treat all my colleagues and friends in India, all my people in India, then I will be treated. So, and then he declined the offer of that dentist. You know, that is a respectful thing, thing from Gandhi. You know, he had a true passion, patriotism of the heart, loving heart for his people. You know, we also see in the scripture of the heart that Jesus had for his people. 
Jesus cried for his people when they were not able to receive the truth. You know, when I tell you guys, um, oh man, you know, I had a bad heart, so I had to go through a ablation therapy for my heart. You know, when I tell you that, do you think, oh, or do, does your heart get hurt? Um, because, you know, as a church leader, somebody is, you know, suffering. Or are you thinking, oh yeah, this is nice that he, he is suffering. You know, if you're having any of that kind of a heart, if your colleague or friend or family or somebody that you don't like is suffering, you know, if you're enjoying in that person's suffering, then you need to ask yourself, is that a true loving heart that you have? If your friends or families or neighbors or f or even your enemy's heart is ailing, if somebody's suffering, and if that does not ail your heart, you know, you need to ask yourself, you need to pray about that yourself. Let's imagine a pastor is is not good at ministering, not good with sermon. You know, if that's the issue, instead of judging them for being bad at doing sermon, you need to have a ailing heart and pray for that person to lift them up. You know, if a person is in a priest team who's not great with singing, you know, you need to be praying for that person so that they will not be hurt and they'll be lifted instead of judging them and say, oh, how can that person who's so terrible in singing, how can they be in the t praise team? And I, who are so much better than him, how come I'm not in the praise team? You know, that's not what the heart we need to have. I'm not just talking about just 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 tearing for the sake of tearing, but it's truly having that interest and truly being hurt and the tear that coming out of the heart for the concerns that you have. That's the loving heart. You know, let me ask the choir, uh, the conductor. You know, you have some people who are extremely good, but you're also some people who are bad or their rhythms are off or their tone is off or whatever, right? You know, what do you think when that happens? You know, do you have a hatred heart towards that person that you want to just kick him out of the choir? You know, a good conductor is not about taking out the people who are, who are terrible or who are off key. The good conductor are people who comfort them and to bring them and to teach them You know, oftentimes the church leaders come up to me and I ask them to say, Oh, please, can you take this person now because it's a struggle? Please do this for me. I don't understand why people, as you are the leader of that group, you should be telling your members, you know, what is good, what is bad, how to educate them or how to, you know, even if they have to, you know, take them out. You know, you need to be doing that, taking that responsibility. I don't understand why people come to me and ask for this problem and that problem for me to take care of this problem. You know, oftentimes again, coming back to the thing, you know, when Korea suff when Korea suffers, you know, people say, oh, that country, they need to go through the suffering like that. You know, you know, they've already suffered for thousands and thousands of years. How much more they, do they need to suffer? You know, you should not be judging and you should not be cursing your own country. You should not be cursing your own America right now that you live in. You don't know. Yes, uh, today's society, today's country, today's economy and political views, you know, there are struggles and things that you don't like, but you cannot be just cursing. I mean, you're the one that lives in this country. You know, you cannot be just judging and hating the homosexual people and just saying, you know, this and that. You know, what the Bible says is not to hate the homosexuality. God actually tells us to love the people. But just what is wrong is the practice of that. And we need to know the real truth about this, what the scripture tells us. 
not just to hate people, but actually God says to love the sinners. And the reason why our church emphasizes on all generations, the old and the young, the reason why we focus on this so much, it's because these, this is the future. This is the generation that's going to determine the future. You know, we cannot just focus on ourselves and not care about our children and the children's children. You need to love, you need to focus, you need to invest, you need to pray for the future generation. You know, the suffering news of other people needs to be the suffering news for my own. You cannot just curse and judge them for the, for the wrong things that they are doing. But you need to personalize it and to keep it and to pray for it. And you need to have the tear in the interest. So the third thing the scripture tells us about the loving heart for the country is that you need to become an intercessor prayer for the for the country for our motherland that's what nehemiah was you know even though he was not physically present in jerusalem because he was a cupbearer for the persian king and he was away from jerusalem he still had his heart for his people for his motherland and he still had that intercessing prayer he continued to pray And those of us, you know, we who are prayer warriors, who we pray, when we pray, it, it's not just a prayer for the sake of praying, but you need to be a mature prayer person. Because Nehemiah didn't just pray for the sake of praying, but because he truly had the heart and truly knew the truth, which was the fact that God is the one that's in control of all these things. God is the one that is the one that is going to lift up the country, that lift up the leader, because God is in the mainstream of all these things. That's why he Nehemiah was a mature prayer. Nehemiah one six says, "Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you in the day and night." And I confess the sins of the Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. you know, what, what sin did Nehemiah uh, have? He didn't commit any sin against his country. But yet, he still took up the sins of his fathers, the Israelites, what they've done. And he claimed that to be his own sin. You know, that's what we need to do as Christian. It's just because we didn't do it doesn't mean you didn't do anything and that you're not responsible. If your father fell, then you need to take that and to for ask for forgiveness. If your wife or your spouse did something wrong, that you need to take up the, the, that wrongfulness and to pray for that and to pray for it. If your neighbor has sinned or your country has sinned, you need to take up that, take it to your heart and pray for it. You know, when Korea had that great reset, uh, depression, IMF 1997, they gathered to to try to, you know, people, a lot of people gather to, you know, to rebuild the country. They gave a lot of their own, you know, gold and they've created meetings to see what the cause of the problem was, blah, 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 all of that, etc. Yeah, those are all great thing. But one thing they didn't do is to repent for the wrong things that they have done in the past. More important than finding out whose fault it was who causes all this problem yes it's important to get to the root of that but more importantly before that we need to ask for repentance and forgiveness you know i'm going to be giving you a sermon on this next week but in korea there's so many statistical things that are so so bad i am so disheartened by these statistical things you know yesterday in the news, the people who um, who get insurance money uh, by deceiving, you know, the number one country to do that is Korea. You know, they purposely do certain things and they get 
um, you know, to they do illegal things to receive um, insurance money. You know, for example, some they ask somebody to park their car, and then they stand behind the parking car, behind the car, and they get run over or get hit by the car on purpose so that they can get the insurance money. You know, and that unfortunately Korea is number one in that. You know that is so disheartening. This is an and that way how they how much money that they make it's ridiculous. It is so embarrassing. There's so many of that. You know, the important thing is you need to pray. You need to repent for this for our country. You can't just blame and say, oh, that's that person's fault. Oh, that country. Oh, yeah. You can't just keep it as a blaming them and just ignore it. You need to take up that problem as your own and pray for it. You know, in order for America to be renewed, if you really don't like your president, our current president, you know, it's not about just blaming them and ignoring the problem. You need to take it as your own problem and to pray for this country. Don't, then only then you will experience God's work in our prayer life. And then the fourth thing about the loving the country is to truly living out this patriotism. It's not just about you know praying sort of blindly. It's not just about saying the problem over and over. But you need to be praying and living it out with action that's what nehemiah did he prayed he had the heart he teared up in his uh for the concerns that he had for jerusalem and he put it into action and he and he started building up that wall in jerusalem and it, took, it only took 50 days to raise up that wall because he put it into action he lived it out he lived out the patriotism and rockefeller you know he was a rich man and he but he did not just keep that by himself he used all his money to serve other people especially those poor poor you know the rockefeller you know he gave out pianos more than thousands of pianos to churches that didn't have it you know he he donated so much money to the people of the country you know that is a true heart who loves the country you know, there was a war that broke out between Egypt and Israel. And when that happened, all the people uh, that were living in the United States, all the Israel people who were living in the United States, they went back to Israel to join the army to fight. But then the people in Egypt, instead, all the people blamed on Egypt, and all the, even the people among the Egypt, they started trying to escape out to USA. Guess who won that war? There's no brainer. What it truly means, the true patriotism truly means not just having an interest, not just being worried, not just worrying about the country and and praying about it, but the, for the sake of praying about it. And not only that, you need to have interest, you need to have that tear for that country, you need to pray, and you need to put it into the action. That's the true patriotism. You know, one of the person said, you know, you know, in Nakdo, which is a small island in Korea, we went to um, the mission trip over there. You know, we went there, we physically gave, and then we came back. Well, just because you guys gave and came back, are you done? Are you done with all your duty? No, we need to keep remembering that place, and you need to keep praying. You need to lift them up you know you need to keep them and think about it and even physically continue to give them aid you know it's just as a one-time deal is not end at all you need to have that heart the passion you know after i came to america um, i went to korea for the first time after 10 years and as I was returning from Korea, you know, I said, you know, well, by that point, Korea became extremely wealthy um, at that point. And they kind of, you know, made, treated us like a, you know, poverty people. You know, and I, as I was returning back to America, 
I said to the Korea like, oh, you know, I'm never gonna come back to Korea. Oh, you, um, you arrogant, you know, people, you know. But over the days and over the years, you know, I started um, repenting, and I started praying again for the country who ignored me or caused me problems or whatever the situation is, and yet I still embraced it and pray for it. You know, as we live in this country, just because you live in a minority society, whether you get treated unequally, whether you get um, racism, you know, don't just blame it on that, but to embrace it and pray for it. You know, Nehemiah was a, this is the important key, this is the key part of the sermon. Nehemiah was a Jerusalem person who was a cupbearer for the Persian king. But in order for you to become a cupbearer, the king, right, who is right by you, by right next to the king, he needs to designate a cupbearer as the person who is the most sincere, who is more truthful, who is more, uh, most, um, you know, not lazy and working hard. That's the person, type of a person you can become a cupbearer. And that's what Nehemiah became. Nehemiah, because he was living sincerity, because he was honest, he was living truthfully, he was working hard. Because of that, Nehemiah became a cupbearer to Persian king. And that you too, I proclaim to you, that we need to be living in this country as an honest, hardworking, truthful, not deceiving, we need to be that hardworking person to live in this country. You know, I'm sure many of us will be um, sort of uncomfortable when you hear this, especially as business people in this country. A lot of us, a lot of us deceive certain things, but you need to, God calls us to be an honest, hardworking, ethical person. You cannot just, you know, like I gave the example about the Korean insurance, um, you know, fraud insurance stuff you know how can you deceive and collect those money that is so embarrassing and path pathetic you know the IRS called and said IRS called you know, quote unquote and said you know you owe $560 um, to IRS if you don't pay now you're gonna get fined five thousand dollar do you think that was true no it's a fraud call you know they mail mail these things they don't call um, you know it's fraud you know there is all deceiving things you get so many spam mails so many spam calls you know these are all deceiving things you know there's a pathetic world we live in yes and that's the reason why we need to be even more ethical. We need to be even more honest. Just because other people are doing, you know, I could do it too. No, that's not the mentality. The true Christian life mentality. Patriotism is to being honest, being truthful, being ethical, and to be hardworking. And that's the people that God will use. That's the Nehemiah that God used to bring up, to raise up Jerusalem again after they came back from exile. We, the Christian people who have left our mother country, we, God calls us to be the true patriot to our country, to live that ethical, honest life so that God will use you only through being ready, being living that true, ethical, honest life, that's when God will use you, just like God used Nehemiah. You know, we who are immigrants, it is not easy to love this country, America. You know, we cannot speak the language, English. We cannot understand the culture fully, and we suffer. But that's why we oftentimes, we hope, and pray and we come to this country hoping that our children's generation may at least be um, assimilated well into this country and live well right but that's uh, that's the exact point you know that's why we emphasize on all generation the first generation second generation third generation children's generation to become one and to live an honest ethical and patriotic life 
as a true Christian faith person. That's what we hope, that's what we hope for. And who needs to do that? Who needs to live like Nehemiah? It is you and I, as well as our children. And I pray that God will bless your children and us as we live this type of life. Let us pray. Lord, loving heart, loving God, you have given us parents, you have given us the country, and thank you so much for the gift that you have given to us. Despite the fact that we may be living here, help us to be remembering our mother country, as well as the country that we live in. Help us to embrace those things, all the struggles and the things, and yet praying and take it as our own and to lift it up. Help us to be able to do that faithfully. All these things in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.